Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, recently uh, I did a talk on if I could only choose one work by Roy Harris, it would have to be. And of course, I chose Symphony Number no. 3 because it's pretty hard to find all the works by Roy, Roy Harris, even the symphony cycles that have been come and, come and gone or some symphony cycles in progress because they were never finished. Um, never finished. And those discs are sometimes easy to find and sometimes they're not so easy to find. He tends to get ignored now as a one-shot wonder and as really a failed composer, a composer who had, uh, you know, somehow mysteriously contrived to issue one great work and everything else was kind of like, nah, either more of the same but not quite as good or, you know, not interesting. I don't know. Roy Harris was a splendid composer. He really was. Um, his output is, yes, somewhat limited, and yes, he had his his failings. His failings are, you know, it's just an interesting thing. I've called him the American Bruckner in some ways because his music can be kind of clunky and discontinuous. Bruckner's music is also clunky and discontinuous, and that was originally considered to be a defect. Now it's considered a virtue. You know, it really all depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Things that at one point were considered to be just absolutely incompetent can be signal elements of style um, in certain circumstances. So I, I, I'm not saying that Harris's flaws are not flaws, but, you know, great composers or great artists, they overcome them or they integrate them, or they somehow make them not matter so much, or they make other things matter more. You know what I mean? So I'm not willing to write off Roy Harris, and I don't think anybody should, because we just don't know his music well enough. We're not into his style. We haven't accepted his point of view in the same way that we did Bruckner or Mahler, or before that, Beethoven, who was, certainly had a point of view that was difficult for some to accept, you know? So I'm just watching the, the cat climb up. I built this this cat highway, you know, you know, that goes up the wall. They can like run around the room, you know, above everything, and and they're in, they're enjoying the uh, experience. It seems, which I think is just it's working. In other words, you know, it's wonderful when you make an effort and it like pays off, which you can never be sure about when you have pets. So that's a, that's a digression. I'm sorry to digress. What I wanted to talk about was when we did this Roy Harris talk, I did this Roy Harris talk, um, and I'm just blathering now, so let me get focused. When I did this Roy Harris talk, some of you said that, oh, don't forget to mention the Violin Concerto, which is a magnificent work, and indeed it is, but hard to find. Where are you going to get a recording? I mean, there's only been a couple since the history of time, but there is a current really superb one that I want to mention. It's really a superb disc. It's by it's by Tasman Whaley Cohen, violin, uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra under Andrew Lytton on Signum Classics. And you get the Roy Harris Violin Concerto and the John Adams Violin Concerto. Really a brilliant coupling. They're both very, very well played. I mean, this is just an amazing disc and no one's gonna talk about it. I didn't talk about it. I didn't even know it existed until I looked because I, you know, I mean, I just, I've just heard it recently. I mean, it's been out for a while, I assume. Um, let me see. It's a, a, uh, I don't know, what's the date? Let me see what the recording date is. I'm just curious about these things because it always is significant to me. I mean, Tasman Whaley Cohen's made several discs and uh, let's see, hang on. Here we go, I'm looking at the back here. Recorded in April, 2016. It's a studio recording, BBC Studio One, sounds great. You know, it's just so typical of the record industry, isn't it, that they don't tell anybody what they're doing, and they don't tell anybody what they're doing, especially when they do something really significant or something that needs to be discussed. I, I, you know, Signum is an English label, and, you know, I've been a critic for 40 years, 35 years, a record critic, and irrespective of whether one likes me or hates me or whatever or the work I'm doing I've had classics today running since since 1999 or something like that and and I've written for every major magazine that exists just about at least in the USA and some not in the USA 
you would think, you would think that a label doing an, a coupling of American violin concertos, especially important and somewhat obscure American violin concertos, would tell one of the most prominent American record critics that this exists and say, hey, you want to hear it? Maybe you want to write about it? <laughs> I didn't know this existed. I finally looked because you guys mentioned, you know, the, 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 the Harris violin concerto. I think I have the other recording of it somewhere. It was on Louisville or one of those labels. I don't know. I, we'll find out when we get to the overflow room if I, if I still have it or had it. I've heard it. And I know it's a great work. But, you know, it, it, it's just another off-topic to, off rant, isn't it? But we have an industry that pays no attention to actually telling people about what it's doing. And the more important what it's doing is, the less it says. And that is such a, now what makes me so angry. Anyway, so what do we have here? The Adams Violin Concerto, first of all, let's say, is, is, is a modern masterpiece for the instrument. It's, it's a marvelous work and a big work, a big, juicy, beefy work. It's 35-ish, it's, it's 33 minutes long, and it, it's just marvelous. But the real... The real sell for this is the Harris Violin Concerto, which no one ever does. I mean, thank, thank Tasman Whaley Cohen for learning the bloody thing. It's not easy. I mean, it, it sounds actually like all of Harris's music, sometimes a little awkward. I mean, I don't can't say because I'm not a violinist myself, but the the essential duality of the work is an orchestral part that contains a lot of long, slow hymn-like pro proclamations, because Harris is nothing if not proclamatory, or declamatory, if you want to say, and then a violin part on top of it. And that violin part is extremely capricious. It, all kinds of interesting things happen <laughs> with this violin part as the orchestra continues below, or around, or on top, or, you know, it, it, it doesn't sound like any other music for violin and orchestra that you've ever heard. And that's a good thing. It's really a good thing. I mean, the music is tonal. It's emotionally quite ambivalent in places. Um, and it, it, it's, it's fascinating. It's an utterly fascinating piece. It's a violin concerto like no other. It, it doesn't have any indications as to what it is. It has in four sections, and they're called section one, section two, section three, section four. That's it. And it's it's a pretty big work, too. We got, let's see, 10 minutes plus, plus let's see, eight plus nine is 17, yeah, about 27, 28 minutes. Um, Harris composed it in 1949. And, and you really ought to hear it. It's special. It's absolutely special and unique to this composer and, and wonderful. And this is a splendid performance. I don't expect to hear better anytime soon or ever. Um, so I'm thrilled that this is out. I'm thrilled that Signum did it. I suspect that you can count the number of sales of this disc on the fingers of one hand because of the fabulous marketing that went on when this thing came out and the attention everybody paid. Well, I'm paying attention to it now and I hope that you will too. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.